Hi everyone, Bria here from Etched Actuarial and in today's video I'm going to be talking about failing exams. So the July 2018 sitting of exam P just passed this week, I think it ended Monday or Tuesday, and a lot of people have come to me and said that they failed their exam unfortunately and they're asking me for tips on what to do and how to go about passing for next time. So in this video, that's what I'm going to talk about. This video is for you if you failed recently. Now there are three primary reasons that people tend to fail actuarial exams. So I'm going to go through all those in this video and try to come up with some solutions so that next time you are doing things differently because that's one of the most important things. You don't want to do the exact same thing as you did last time because that's probably not going to work. Something has to change. So reason number one that most people fail is because they don't get as much study time as they anticipated that they would. It's really easy to start studying maybe three or four months ahead of time and say, okay, I'm going to study for two hours every day or sometimes you might not even have any idea in mind of how much you're going to study. But that's a big mistake in itself because you need to be able to figure out when you're going to study. One of the things I do for my study strategy members, and this is something that you can do yourself, is set up a calendar that has every single hour of every day through the week in it. So in that calendar, you can mark down exactly what time you're going to dedicate to studying each and every day. So for some of you, you might prefer to study in the morning before work or before school because that's when you're most fresh and most awake. So if you schedule that time in every morning, then you know that there's nothing else that you can do during that time. That time is scheduled for studying. Others might prefer to do studying after work or in the evening, but you have to figure out what works for you. And once you book it into your calendar, there are 168 hours in a week. So once you book those study hours into your calendar, don't let them get taken up by anything else. Those are booked. What you can do now that you have those booked is book everything else that you have to do. I know lots of you have other priorities, so you're going to have to have time to do those. But by scheduling all this out hour by hour, you actually figure out how much time you really have for studying. It's not something that you just kind of squeeze in when you can. So I definitely recommend doing that. I will leave a link below this video to a sample, uh, a sample 168 hour schedule that you can pretty much replicate for your own use. Another thing that works really well for this is having accountability. If you've heard about my study strategy program, you know that one of the main things that I talk about it being helpful for is to have someone to be accountable to. When you're studying, it's kind of easy to put it off if you, if you have something else come up during the day or maybe you're just feeling tired and you decide to put studying off because it always feels so far away. But if you don't study consistently, every day or almost every day, then you're going to find that it piles up more and more and more and you get further and further behind. And by the time you actually start to seriously study, you don't have enough time because the exam is so close. So I really recommend finding someone that you can be accountable to. You could join the study strategy program, but there are other ways. You can find a friend that's writing at the same time as you that could, you guys could work together and back and forth and just make sure you're both staying accountable. Maybe you could have the same exact schedule so that you guys are doing the same things every day. Um, and to find a study partner, actually, you can join one of my uh, Facebook groups. So I have a daily exam P questions Facebook group and a daily exam FM questions Facebook group. And there are tons of people in there that are all studying for the same exam as you. So if you join that and then you just post in there for someone looking for an accountability partner, I'm sure that you'll find someone. One more thing that people have trouble with in this area is that after a long day, you often feel kind of worn out and you just can't study. So one possibility for this is to study in the morning before you do all your other, other activities of the day. Or one thing that really helped me was to come home from work, 
take a short nap for like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on how tired I was, and then do my studying after. That nap made, you, made a huge difference because I was just so much more refreshed after that. My head didn't feel so bogged down and cluttered and it didn't feel like it worn out. So if you just take a short nap after work or after school, just try it. You might actually feel like you can study for much longer and concentrate better. Okay, now let's move on to the second reason that people fail. This is because you didn't understand the material well enough. Okay, so members of my study strategy program will know that I really emphasize understanding everything. I never want you to memorize anything until maybe the last week or two. But what I want you to focus on is understanding every single thing you do. When you go through your study manual, you should be understanding it at the very least at about 75%. And when you do practice questions, even if you don't get them right, you should fully understand the solution. If you don't, then you need to get help on getting answers for those questions that you have. Because if you don't understand the questions that you're doing and the solutions, then there's really no point in doing them. Think about it. If you don't understand the solutions that you don't understand, then really you're just going through study material that you already understand and that's not going to help you improve. So make sure that you're understanding all the solutions to the questions you get wrong. Now there are some places you can go to, to get help for this. You can of course join the study strategy program. In there I have a Q&A forum where I'm answering questions and some other members of my team are answering questions and that makes a big difference because we usually get to you like if you ask a question, we'll have an answer for you in the forum by the morning. Another place that you can go is the Facebook groups that I talked about earlier. Sometimes people just ask questions in there when they're not sure about something and other members of the group will come together and help out. Oh, and one more place that you can go is your study manual provider or your study video provider. Sometimes they'll have an option to email the author or there might even be a forum in there where you can ask any questions that you have. Like TIA and Coaching Actuaries both have that included in their package, I believe. Okay, and the third reason people don't end up passing their exam is because they weren't answering questions fast enough. So... You know that the exams are three hours, exam P and FM, they're both three hours long. And there are tons of questions that you have to answer in each, 30 for exam P and 35 for exam FM. So you have to practice doing those exams in timed conditions well before the exam. I don't recommend you spend just the last week doing that. I recommend that you start doing practice exams six, seven, or eight weeks before your real exam. That will help you judge where you're at. You'll get a sense of how well you're doing and what kind of questions you need to practice on, especially under time pressure. So if you went into your exam only doing one or two practice exams beforehand, then that's not the best strategy. You need to be doing way more than that. Okay, so you might have noticed that all these things relate to study strategy. The reason that I started the study strategy program was because I know that there are so many people just like me that didn't know how to study for these actuarial exams when they're just getting started. There was so little information online and really it's an individual process that everyone goes through. Not everyone needs to do the exact same things because it really depends on how you progress and develop throughout your entire study period. So that's why the study strategy program came about. In that program, I help you specifically work through the entire studying process so that you know every single day what you should be trying to accomplish. And I monitor your progress and see how you're developing so that I can adjust your schedule in a way that's best for you. That program so far has been so successful and helped so many people pass their exam. So if you have the budget to get my help in that study strategy program, I highly recommend you do because it will pay off. The techniques that you learn in the program can even help you in future exams because a lot of the time, once you learn the strategy and the technique that works for you right now for your first exam or two, you can use those in all the later exams. 
So I highly recommend you get that. I'd love to work with you. I will leave more about that study strategy program in the description below with a link where you can go find out all the details. One of the cool things is that I actually have a $225 pass guarantee. And that means that, well, let's start here. When you sign up for exam P or FM, maybe you already know this since you're probably watching this video because you've failed in the past, but there's a $225 registration fee. And that fee is used, I don't know what they use it for actually, but the fee is there and you need to pay it whenever you want to write an exam. So I guarantee in my program that if you are in it for 14 weeks and stick to the schedule that you're going to pass. Otherwise, I pay your next $225 exam registration fee when you rewrite. So I hope that gives you some confidence to join. I'm really confident that you can pass. So come join me there and I will see you in the next video. Bye.